Hello friends, welcome back. So I thought I would jump in, it's the middle of July, and give you an update on our garden. Um, well, we've got a pest. And it's the worst pest because it's not like a cabbage worm that goes after just your kale and your cabbage. It's not, um, I don't know, like one thing that goes after, you know, one species. It's basically a groundhog. <laughs> we discovered that we had a groundhog that um, was going under our coop. I'm sorry, it's our, an old coop, but um, it's now a garden shed. And so we realized that there were all these stones underneath it, um, clearly trying to keep this thing out from underneath the garden shed from our previous owners. And um, because we haven't had to deal with this before, that's one thing I didn't think about. And can I just tell you that in hindsight, um, had I known one predator could devastate all or almost all of your garden, um, I probably would have taken a little bit more precaution and tried to keep them out more. Um, I did, when I noticed, um, I thought something was walking through our wheat. I started to kind of put more fencing around the garden um, for larger animals. Um, and then I noticed something was eating our peas. And so again, I tried to reinforce a fencing around the pea area. Um, little did I know, groundhogs eat everything and anything. <laughs> and so um, you will see, it has basically eaten the tops of all of our um, squash, our zucchini. It ate our peas. It eats the leaves off our beets. It um, has stayed away from our garlic and our onions um, and our tomatoes. And it looks like our pepper plants are okay. Although I am, I did see a pepper plant growing at one point and it's gone. So I'm assuming it went after that pepper plant too. Um, yeah, it's going after the leaves of our bean plants. It has literally trampled all of our wheat and I was starting to think, you know what, the wheat's almost at a really good stage where it's starting to um, dry and I can harvest it soon. Well, look at it now, <laughs> completely trampled. But worse yet is the groundhog has actually eaten all of the wheat berries off the wheat. So I will show you a close up, but every stalk or, you know, stalk of wheat is headless, like the wheat is gone. And it is so frustrating, um, but I kind of laugh about it because I knew going into this garden, we were doing a lot of trial and error. And it's a new area for us, a new state, a new kind of a new climate. Um, we're on a hill, on a very large hill, and then we're at the top. And so, you know, water and drainage were things I was thinking about. Um, basically everything except a groundhog. I did not think about a groundhog. <laughs> So again, live and learn. This is something new that we're, we're learning about. Um, we've had a lot happen. We've learned a lot this year and it's been really challenging. And so um, as if you've watched any of my other videos, we had a fox attack our chickens. We lost five and three were wounded. And fortunately, with the help of a very amazing friend of mine, um, we were able to heal the wounds on those three and they're still with us today and they're doing great. Um, but it was really sad and it took a lot of my energy and time away from the garden. And so there were a lot of things that I wanted to do, like reinforcing stems and heights and, um, weeding and things like that, that I just didn't get to do in the garden. The chickens were my priority and, um, making sure their enclosure was safe. What happened was we had to fell a tree, um, in the woods, a really tall tree that was totally dead and um, while our yard is fenced in um, I think when we fell the tree um, when we went through the gate um, the gate wasn't shut and, and then secured afterwards and I just didn't think about making sure that the gate was re-secured and um, that there were no holes for a fox to get in it was also kit season, so it was the spring, and that's when foxes like to hunt and show their babies how to hunt. Um, 
and we saw some areas under our pasture as well where the fox could have gotten in through our yard. So not the perimeter on the outside between the woods and the pasture, but through our yard. Um, and so lesson learned the hard way again. So this year has been a huge learning experience for us. Um, but as you can imagine, to just reinforce go around and, and kind of reinforce the yard, but then also the pasture, which is now where I'm just going to let the, the chickens free range. Um, in the pasture, I've put up a lot of fencing. I've heightened the fencing and I made sure there's no large gaps um, underneath. I've kept these bushes and shrubs up to kind of give a little bit of privacy barrier. And then we also have these lines um, to work as a hawk deterrent. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work. I've read it. It works. I don't know if our setup is, if I have enough of a spider web to kind of um, inhibit the hawks, but so far it's been working and we've created a little, we've got a little fort in there too, fort area that the, the chickens like to hunker down under. Um, and also um, one of the newer uh, things that we've learned is we have a rooster. So in the batch of 10 chicks that we got in March, we ended up getting a rooster. So now we have a rooster who will also help protect our flock. Um, so little blessings in disguise, I guess. So far, our neighbors have been really cool. Um, while this is a right to farm community, we are in a um, development. So um, I just want to be cognizant of our neighbors and make sure that any loud crowing um, is not bothering anyone. And so I've reached out to some of our neighbors that are really close to us. And so far, everyone fun has been really cool. And of course, I've just said, you know, we will get rid of him and rehome him if we need to. Um, so, but so far he's been a nice rooster. If he turns mean, we'll get rid of him. <laughs> but so far he's been really nice and um, actually really good at protecting the girl, sounding the alarm. And his crows haven't been too, too loud. Of course, he's just 18 weeks right now. So he still has um, a lot of growing to do and I'm sure the hormones are really gonna start kicking in. He's right there. That's Lulu our rooster. So he was our barn of elder, or is our barn of elder. Um, he's actually, surprisingly, becoming more friendly. He does not want to be held or touched. Um, the other girls, except for one, May, are, are um, oh, our blue and illusion does not like to be held or touched either, but um, she's the one that likes to, she doesn't mind sitting on your shoulder if it's her choice, but she does not want you to pick her up out of your free will. So um, Lulu is the same, but he's sweet. Uh, he's not aggressive towards people yet. And um, he's actually starting to be more curious and come over by us, which he hasn't done in the past. So I think, you know, we're hopeful and optimistic that he might turn out to be a good rooster for us. But um, yeah, that's kind of where we've netted out. I'm gonna, I've already started to collect some onions. Um, the good thing actually, so let's see, the few things that our groundhog that, um, you know, rent-free groundhog uh, is saving for us. Our beets, um, he's eating the leaves, but we can still harvest the beets. So we harvested some yesterday. Our carrots, he's not getting our carrots or the greens, which I'm kind of surprised about. Um, again, our garlic, I already harvested all of our garlic. Um, and that actually did really well. So um, I think we got about 40, 40 cloves of garlic. And um, what else? I'm getting some green beans too. Um, so surprisingly, uh, he's eating the, the leaves off our bean plants, but um, I'm still getting green beans. Now, most of the beans I have are um, black beans. So while I love fresh beans, um, and the taste of fresh green beans. I think we'll harvest a few of those, but for the most part, um, I think I'm gonna try to leave them and let them dry. Although now that I'm saying that, I'm thinking if I leave anything, it's probably gonna get eaten by this darn groundhog. So I better pick them and bring them inside before they're gone too. We'll see. I had a whole plant of green beans that, so maybe, I don't know, have to, figure that one out. But yeah, that's kind of where we 
have netted out. Our tomatoes seem to be doing okay. It doesn't seem to be going after green tomatoes. Whether or not he'll go after juicy red ones, that's another story. Here are our some of our green, our green beans. Um, we are having a very, very dry summer as well. And so it's taking a lot to water everything, um, you know, every day. And so you can see our lawn, if you haven't already, it's super dry. And our neighbor's lawns are all brown and crusty and dying. Um, but I love that because, well, I don't love it, but what I think when I see a brown crusty lawn is that, woohoo, those families, those people aren't using chemicals on their lawn, um, which is a win-win for all of our birds and our bees, our wildlife, our animals, our communities, our wells. Um, and so I would much rather see a lawn crunchy and brown than bright green and um, what some consider to be beautiful. I consider it to be fake and toxic. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I have noticed our blueberries are getting eaten by something. We put these um, three new blueberry plants in right behind me. One, two, three. And then we also put some strawberries in, which those are getting eaten in our other garden. <laughs> so one note is I'm going to have to put some fencing around any edible um, plants in our yard that I don't want, um, you know, wildlife to take. So that's okay. I'm figuring this out as we go along. And like I said, this is, we still haven't even been here for a year. So we're, we're figuring it out and, uh, making the most of it. And we'll go from there. Stay tuned. I'll keep updating you guys. Here, I'll show you our little bee and butterfly garden behind me, which is really working out nicely. We're having a lot of butterflies and bees visiting lately. All right, friends, as always, thank you for joining and subscribing and liking and all that good stuff. Um, appreciate your viewership and uh, feel free to share. All right, thanks, bye.